graders, welcome to Art Class with Miss Smith. Our first project is inspired by cave art. In the Google Classroom, you'll see some links, PowerPoints, and videos teaching you all about these awesome cave drawings from prehistoric times. So if you think about the reason why they were making these was uh, various reasons, like one, to document what was going on. Of course, they didn't have cameras or newspapers or social media to show everyone what they were doing. So um, they would tell stories and they would show what their lives were like. Another reason they probably did it, we're guessing, is to celebrate their hunts. So um, it was sort of like bragging rights to say, hey, look at all these buffalo <laughs> I killed. <laughs> um, and another reason that historians talk about that they potentially made cave drawings is to um, kind of as, as in a religious ceremony, sort of like this uh, omen of good luck of projecting good things on the walls that would then in turn maybe make happen. So um, your guess is as good as mine. Um, clearly none of us were around back then with the cavemen and women. But we can certainly make cool art inspired by them. Any kind of paper will do. I chose this sort of off-white paper just to have a kind of a more natural look to it. Uh, you could use white paper, you could use, oh, another thing that would work really well would maybe to be, or to cut up a brown paper bag from a grocery store. I thought that might um, make a good texture. You could certainly use computer paper, copy paper, anything. Look, then the really fun part, crumple it up. <laughs> so if you're having a bad day, <laughs> beware of paper cuts. This could create a hazard. Um, you could really get your frustrations out. Maybe your little brother's bothering you to do. Maybe you're tired of COVID and staying in the house. I don't know. You could even stomp on it. <laughs> but uh, the reason for crumpling up the paper is to give it texture. Of course, texture is how something feels. And since we're making art inspired by these prehistoric cave drawings, we want it to look kind of old. Um, you could add some really interesting kind of edges to it, maybe some torn, uneven type edges. That could be fun. And again, awfully satisfying, especially if you've had a rough day. Just tear it up. <laughs> okay, I'll do that on all four edges. That felt good, tearing up paper. I've got all four edges, nice and organic, the opposite of geometric and straight. They're more funky and soft. All right, one element of cave art is overlapping. So you're gonna see different shapes going on top and behind each other. So um, a really beautiful element that I found in some of the cave art pieces are these handprints that look like maybe they put their hand down and perhaps blew dust or painted around them and it created negative space. So they're actually not coloring the inside of the hand, they're coloring the outside of the hand. So um, if you want to add that element to your cave art, cool. If you don't, cool. I'm an art teacher that believes in creative choice. So the things I show you are just options. They're just jumping off points. You do you. <laughs> just traced my hands in brown crayon, but you could use pencil, marker, chalk, anything goes. And if you are having trouble tracing your own hand, which is actually a little tricky, you could get someone to help you. All right, after you trace your hands, then you can do some shading. Now there are various ways that you can create the effect of blending or shading. One way is just through pressure. So near my hand, I could push hard, 
or near the line, the edge of my fingers, I can push hard, creating a darker line. And then as I go back, I could get lighter and lighter. And that is through varying degrees of pressure. Another way to shade or blend would be to use different colors, different shades of colors. So I could find a lighter brown or a tan color and easily do some blending with that. So I'll probably actually do a combination of both. An experiment, see what works for you. All right, I'm gonna do a time lapse because ain't nobody got time to watch the whole thing. <laughs> your background, I want you to start thinking about your foreground or your subject matter. Side note, if you don't want to do this hand technique, another idea I just thought of that could look really cool is to use leaves as your negative shapes. That could be really interesting. But honestly, you do not have to do shapes in the back room. You could do a toning um, process where you kind of use the side of a crayon to um, rub on there, which actually could look really cool highlighting the crinkles in the paper, making it look a little bit more like stone. Hmm, I might have to try that. Um, so, the subject matter. We talked about animals. Um, you're probably not out there hunting buffalo. <laughs> I don't know. But um, you, I'm sure, have animals around you, whether it be pets, neighbors, pets, animals that you see while you're driving around, or even favorite animals, you could, sky's the limit. It does not have to be a pet. But if you would like to put pets, that might be a direction that I would like to go in because we have three cats and a dog at our house. Uh, Molly, Ivy, Louie, and Wookie are our pets. So those could make really nice subject matter here. And the beauty of cave art is you do not need to get detailed. In fact, you want it to look very simple, almost childlike. Um, think stick figures. Think basic shapes with stick arms, legs, head, horns, whatever your animal has. Um, hey, this is a good excuse to loosen up a little bit. I hear so many adults that say to me, oh, I can't draw but a stick figure. Well, hey, this is your chance. You can put stick figures. Uh, speaking of stick figures, you do not have to just do animals. You could include people. One idea I had that uh, could be really interesting for this cave art is to do a 2020 version. So uh, there's been a lot of crazy stuff going on this year. Um, you could document it in your cave art. So something like a mask, hand sanitizer, two stick figures saying six feet away. You could even draw the actual coronavirus with the spikes on it. You could do toilet paper since everybody's been needing that. There's a lot of possibilities here. Or you could Go in totally your own direction. Um, as long as you do it in the style of cave art, then you will be good to go. I'm gonna um, show you how I plan, which is either making small sketches, little thumbnails, or actually I use my iPad a lot. So what I'll do is film what my planning process is using my iPad. I have an Apple Pencil and an app called Procreate. If you're at all interested in doing this digital art, it has completely rocked my world. But it will allow you to see some brainstorming techniques that I use. So I'll photograph this as my background and then I'm gonna draw on top of it digitally and then whatever I like, I'll do it in real life.
that you have brainstormed ideas for subject matter, whether it be things from nature, things from 2020, or maybe animals that you like that are around you, really, sky's the limit. You can actually add these shapes onto your background. I enjoy using my iPad to sketch with. I think I'm gonna go with this last idea of my pets since they are near and dear to my heart. Um, if you use crayons for this part, may I recommend that you also use crayon to go on top. I thought about using Sharpie, but the waxy surface here may make it difficult for that to stick onto. So I'm gonna try crayon and I could, if I was scared to mess up, I could certainly do this in pencil first, but hopefully I won't mess up. But you know, if I do, I could turn it into something else. And the beauty of cave art is that it's supposed to look kinda childlike, sort of um, simple, right? Okay, I'll start with Molly, the dog, up here. And I'm gonna go with these basic big shapes. So here's her body here. Can you see that okay? Oh, good, good, good. Uh, Molly's about four years old. People stop us <laughs> when we're out and about, and they're like, what kind of dog is that? She's very unusual looking. Maybe I could include a photo of her at from the shelter so she's a rescue dog and um, I guess you could call her a mutt um, she is really really shaggy <laughs> she's got this wiry hair and um, <laughs> it's gray some people will see her and they're like oh look at that old dog and we say well she's she's four so she's not old um, <laughs> we've even heard really funny comments like somebody said, look at that homeless dog. Is she okay? And we're like, we're right here. She's well taken care of. <laughs> this lady the other day, she looked at Molly and she said, does she always look like that? Or has she been rolling in the mud? And we were like, nope, that's just the way she looks. So um, it's kind of funny. She looks like um, maybe the Tramp from that new Lady in the Tramp movie. I don't know if you guys have seen that a new live action movie. Um, <laughs> it's pretty funny to see people's reactions. She's super sweet. So that is Molly. I think I'm gonna add her name here. M O L L. Remember, you do not have to add words. I'm a pretty open art teacher. I like creativity, so make it your own. All right, Molly, and then this is gonna be Ivy. Ivy is a very unique cat. She has no tail. Maybe she was like in an accident or perhaps she had lost her tail somehow. Um, but then I Googled it and she is actually, her species, her breed is tailless. So she's a, a Manx cat. None of them have tails. They have stubs. It's really cute actually. Um, the Manx cats are from the Isle of Man in England, and um, they call them cabots, because they're like cats, but they also look like rabbits. It's really funny. Um, she is extremely round. Some of her nicknames we call her football with legs, or chicken nugget, or dumpling. So I'm gonna give her a very round body here. Uh, her favorite thing is to eat uh, fancy feast out of a can. So I'm going to give her a little can here, maybe with a F, F for fancy feast. And this is Ivy. Ivy. She's 
super, super sweet. You know, I'm noticing this is a little darker, so I may go back and um, punch that outline up. This, this black crayon is working well. I mean, it's kind of hard to get detail, but I think since we're doing cave art, we don't want it to be terribly detailed anyway. So it's got that sort of rough edge that, that's actually pretty good for this project. All right, next is our new kitten named Wookie. And he is named after Chewbacca in Star Wars, who's very, very furry. And that's where Wookie got his name. And um, he is quite the amazing kitten. towards the beginning of COVID because I mean why not we're here all the time why not get another kitten and he has been such an awesome addition to our family he's really unique looking like he's super fuzzy and furry oh man my crayon broke technical problems um I'm gonna give him ear fluff here and I'll give him like a little goatee I think when he grows up He's going to be huge. His, um, his paws are ginormous. He's actually pretty skinny, but his tail is out of control. It's like bigger than his body. So I'm giving him a super big tail here with tons of fluff coming out. And then he's got really fluffy body here. I think maybe he's a Maine Coon cat, we're not sure. But they can get really, really big. It's funny because he has a gigantic tail and Ivy has no tail. So they kind of balance each other out. Together they make a regular cat. <laughs> and he's got this W on his forehead, which is really cool. All right, that's Wookie. W-O-O-K. Next is Louie. for about four years. He is, um, how could you say? He has some troubles. Uh, he's, he's a little grumpy sometimes. Uh, so that's why I drew him with his fangs out because he <laughs> does that a lot. It's quite lovely. He's also a hunter who brings us um, dead mice and stuff. Sorry if that's violent for you but um, he must think we really love these gifts that he brings us of mice. I'm like no dude please no okay Louie I'm just gonna focus on Louie's head here so that I can do the classic Louie look okay and, and I'm also gonna do sort of angry eyes Louis stays outside almost all the time, especially during the day. He just graces us with his presence when he wants food. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna give him some more angry eyes here. Okay, a little nose action. And then I'm looking at my drawing that I already did. That's really helping me out, especially since I'm working in crayon. It's kind of hard actually to, um, to kind of work out the details if I hadn't already sketched it previously. Okay, wow. <laughs> Looking pretty fierce, King Louie. Alright, where should I put his name? Hmm. Maybe here. L -L -L -E. 
Um, I've got some empty spaces here, so I think I'm going to add some paw prints and maybe my pets. So I've got a little empty space here. Do some I thought about adding a, a mouse that <laughs> we had caught. <sighs> Never a dull moment around here. Three cats, one dog, two kids. Lots of adventure that keep us entertained. I think that's about all I want to do. How do y'all like to sign your work? Do you put your name on the back? Do you put it bottom right? I know that's what a lot of artists do. Totally up to you. But I definitely want to see your art. So please, please, please make sure you check out the Google uh, Classroom, which has a link to um, just ways of photographing and uploading your work. Because I definitely want to see your art. And I can't wait to see what kind of creative interpretations you have on this. So we could call this contemporary cave art. Thank you so much for joining me in this first project. This is just the beginning. We'll have tons of fun. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, give me any feedback. Tell me what you think in the Google Classroom and um, look forward to our next project. Thanks guys. Bye.